If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 166 of the career mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with a game against a side that I thought was going to be the strongest in our Europa League group, but it turns out they lost to Rapid Vienna, uh, as did we, so uh, that's fair enough. But uh, we were able to get three points against Terek Grozny, but uh, Rapid Vienna appeared to be the strongest force in this European group right now. And uh, sadly for uh, Braga, they lost to them as well and then obviously subsequently beat Terek Grozny also. So we've had similar results so far in the group stage, but I was unsure as to how this game was going to go. As it turned out, it was actually effing ridiculous how this game went. So buckle yourself in for one hell of a ride in this opening game. But uh, obviously we coming into this on some decent form. We had a rather surprising result against Manchester United in the previous episode. Things are going very well for us domestically, at least in the Barclays Premier League. Obviously we got knocked out of the Capital One. Cup at the first attempt thanks to uh, Everton Football Club but in the league we're doing very well sat top of uh, the Barclays Premier League at this stage tried to drill this across to uh, Georgiev in the middle it uh, somehow manages to find its way to the Bulgarian after uh, getting a couple of deflections the goalkeeper scrambles for it and just pushes it straight to Georgia and we take a 1-0 lead early on we're in the 25th minute we steal it off them there and again weird strange defending from them he just kind of slide tackles the ball that is already effectively in his possession Knock it over the top to Yusuf Paulson, and that makes it 2-0 after 27 minutes. So a strong start here for us against the side that I thought I was really going to struggle against. We are at home though, so perhaps that kind of puts it in our favour slightly. Julian von Haak doesn't have the best of pace, so I had to make sure I quickly played that off to uh, to George F. But he gets it back again here, Julian, as we're into the second half. And strange animation from the goalkeeper there as he, I don't know whether that's a slip or... We see that quite a few times so far in uh, FIFA 15. They just seem to try and two-foot the ball rather than actually save it. But they pulled one back on the hour mark to make it 3-1. So uh, after 62 minutes, they were starting to get themselves back in the game. Again, playing the long ball up to the top in the 66th minute, Adair and, uh, and Juan Carlos linking up quite nicely. And brilliant feat from Juan Carlos. Completely schools me with uh, the initial turn there. And he sets it up to the man at the back post. And then I don't know what my two defenders are doing. I told them to uh, clear it by pressing the B button. And he tried to stand tackle the ball that was next to him. So my defender does effectively what their defender did for our second goal. Their guy just kind of tried to slide tackle the ball that was already in his possession. And my guy tried to stand tackle a ball that was already in his possession. And then in the 72nd minute... 73rd minute they made it 3-3 they scored three goals in the space of 10 minutes I was like brilliant thanks for that game 3-0 lead completely thrown away then just four minutes after that they're in again coming down this right hand side Adair linking up with uh, Tiba here gonna stand it up into the box and there's Juan Carlos with 4-3 down what the fuck has actually happened we were 3-0 up after an hour and it's now 4-3 after 75 minutes. Are you actually shitting me? Down the right-hand side comes Alvaro Vidio. There's only five minutes left. We're looking to get a point now. After being 3-0 up, we're looking to try and salvage a point from this game at home against Braga. I could not believe it. Paulson tries to get the cross in. Completely wiped out by the defender, but a brilliant cross by Vidio. And up goes Julian von Haak to pick up his second goal of the game. And we do get a 4-4 draw at home against Braga. I cannot explain to you what happened in that game, to be completely honest. Goalkeepers were weird, defenders were weird, trying to tackle the ball that was already in the positions on both sides, and somehow we came out with a point. Crazy, crazy game in the uh, in the Europa League, and that leaves us still level on points with Braga in the group. So it's going to be close between ourselves and the Portuguese to uh, who gets that second qualification spot to the knockout rounds. We jump into Barclays Premier League football again here. West Brom are having a pretty poor season so far. It's top versus bottom here, first versus 20th. They're starting a really unrecognisable side as well compared to uh, a West Bromwich Albion side of uh, modern day football in uh, real life. But obviously. They do have quite a few ageing players in real life, so perhaps it isn't too much of a surprise to see some extra uh, new names in there. But we're starting a rotation side here, as you can tell, after uh, obviously uh, it's the same situation as we have every uh, game after a Europa League fixture. Thursday to the weekend really isn't enough for my main players or the players that played in the Europa League game to regain fitness, but we were able to get off to a good start here. 15 minutes in, Adarabi Oyo rises best from a corner to power in a header. He's actually a very good player for us now, Adarabi Oyo. Up at 76 rated, but is extremely quick, really strong and good on the ball. He's 
good. His stats are brilliant in the in the uh, you know positions that he needs to have good stats in. But we seem to have noticed this more often than not this season as well, especially recently, the past two or three weeks in real life over the various episodes from various series, we've noticed a lot of rash challenges from behind that have ended up in players getting straight red cards. Jason Davidson is the latest of those players to get that straight red, so they're down to 10 men here, West Brom, into the second half we go. Only 15 minutes from time now, but we are going to make it 2-0 as Juan Aguadar uh, just kind of lets that run across him, in fact, and the goalkeeper kind of committed to come out to it. Juan and uh, then ran wide and uh, opened up the angle to finish the ball into the back of the net. And then uh, in the 86th minute, not a lovely first touch by Sadio Mane, who's actually not had as much of an impact on the first team as I was hoping he would do, to be completely honest, since we brought him in. But uh, maybe I should play him at striker every now and again, just to see if he can actually get into the goal-scoring vein of form that we know he can uh, you know, do in from real life. But Quezzi's going to come back on the attack here after they initially cleared it. Laid across to Ivas, who's left-footed, and he scores a good goal there, powering it into the back of the net. It to make it 3-0. That's two really good finishes in this game so far. The header from Adarabioyo and that shot from Ivaz was very impressive as well. They overcommitted though here, West Brom, trying to get themselves back in it. Nobody back whatsoever. Got the entire half to myself. You already know what I'm going to do. Uh, goal, give, goal difference could become important towards the end of the season, so I have to ensure that I score. To make it 4-0, squaring it to Quezzi Appiah, obviously it's pretty cheeky, but in that situation, I didn't really feel uh, too bad about doing it. Had we been level and that had been a goal to win it, I may have actually tried to do the uh, professional thing and, uh, you know, shoot with the initial player so that I didn't feel like I cheated West Brom out of a point. But with the, the scoreline already 3-0 and it being the 94th minute and they had 10 men, didn't see a problem squaring it, to be completely honest. But we're starting our strongest side again. Same side that scored four against Braga and unfortunately conceded four against Braga is uh, starting here at home this time, facing off against a Liverpool side that are actually going to be quite a tough challenge. They're going to have Raheem Sterling and Divock Origi out wide, which is obviously where their pace is. They are starting uh, Iago Aspas, though, which is quite strange up top. And they've got Daniel Sturridge and Felipe Coutinho on the bench, Lalana Henderson and Allen in the midfield, which is... Uh, surprising, but maybe, you know, maybe St Sturridge and uh, Coutinho are lacking fitness, perhaps, which is why they are uh, on the bench and not in the starting lineup. which is, you know, what I do, I rotate my squad quite heavily, so perhaps it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but we get a little bit lucky here. Good double save from Marcus Hutchinson to make sure that they don't score and uh, we are able to scramble it clear, but they continue to be on top in the opening few minutes here. Liverpool really, really struggled defensively to, uh, to deal with them. They're uh, football was actually very, very tough to contain. The ball here drops on the edge of the box to Henderson, gets it into Lalana, lays it across to Sterling. They, I guess it's technically a sweat because he could have shot their Aspas and my keeper had started to commit to come forward and they uh, just played it around him. But uh, they take the 1-0 lead and I just kind of had to try and make sure that I kept hold of the ball from here on out in this first half to try and get myself back level if I possibly could. But they were defending very well, as you can see. It's really, really hard to get the ball through their back line. Ended up having to have a shot from distance there with Johannes Geis with just a wall of red shirts between him and the goal. But Julian von Haag is involved again here into Johannes Geis again. Going to try and turn inside and get the shot away if he can, but he can't. Finds von Haag who does get the shot off, but it's well blocked by uh, their defender, unfortunately. So we have to try and rebuild if we possibly can. They bought on Studge. He was initially involved here immediately with uh, their free kick. Squares across to uh, Adam Lalana. Gets the turn in into Joe Allen. We too are trying to put a few bodies between man and ball though and fortunately when the shot does come in from the uh, Belgian Origi it does end up going wide so we are able to get, uh, get catch another break defensively and the scoreline stays at 1-0. Then they make a mistake. Give the ball straight to Alvaro Vidio there. Drops to Yusuf Paulson here as he passes it inside and I would have put my house on Paulson finishing that shot with the amount of form and the amount of goals that he's been in so far this season. But a good save by Simon Mignolet keeps us out. We were going to get one final chance, though, before the game was out. Palenz, our German right-back, pushing down the right-hand side, trying to forge an opening. Stands it up into the middle, and there's Strahl, George. Have nothing the goalkeeper can do. A close-range header down into the bottom corner. Well-placed, good power, and a decent cross as well to pinpoint uh, George in between the two defenders. Gives us a 1-1 draw at home against Liverpool, so not 100% uh, record today by any stretch we do get a win in the league and a point and obviously a draw in the Europa League in that mental game against SC Braga so we do still remain top of the table but we are going to be third in the Europa League group as you'll be able to see as the table top uh, table pops up on your screen but Terek Grozny were actually surprisingly able to get a victory against Rapid Vienna so the group has actually closed up considerably and uh, now it's 6-4-4-3 in terms of points where I was expecting uh, Vienna to be up on 9 then ourselves and Braga on 4 and Terry Krosny on, no, on uh, no points but obviously
obviously they were able to get a victory against the Austrian side. So that puts the entire group back into the balance. So we're not sure what's going to happen there. We are currently five points clear at the top of the BPL, but Newcastle do have a game in hand and can close that gap to just three should they win said game in hand. Uh, there are two teams are obviously not pictured there. And uh, they're actually on four points and three points, I believe. So already starting to drop a little bit of a gap between themselves and safety. Although obviously West Ham and Stoker sat there on six. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem for them to catch up. But uh, yeah, I'm pleased with how this season's going so far domestically. Uh, well, in the league, obviously I would have liked to go further in the Capital One Cup and I would like to make it out of the Europa League group stage. We got to the semi-finals last year. I'd love to win it. If we could do that and then qualify for Champions League next season, then that'd be absolutely fantastic. We'll probably only have two more seasons in this career mode. We'll finish this one. Then we'll probably only have time for one more before FIFA 16 comes out. So I would like to compete in the Champions League before, uh, before the series comes to a close. So that's why we're leaving it on World Class for now and I'm sure you guys can appreciate that. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed, of course, and subscribe if you haven't already. Check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days, whether it be this series, the My Player series, which was uploaded earlier on today, the Youth Squad Challenge series, which, of course, went up yesterday as well with Chani and MGH, and obviously there's a Chelsea Career Mode video went up yesterday also. But that's all from me for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.